guys, is we, it's, we can't recreate game type scenarios here. Okay, so we're kind of have to kind of get your mind frame in a place to where we're you're, you're thinking there's a hitter up there, and we put ourselves in these situations. Um, so we can't recreate reads and jumps in real life scenarios, but the focus today is is movement and moving the right way, moving just like we did yesterday on the field. So that's the focus today. Same mechanics, same thought. It's just going to be on grass or on the dirt. So let's let's take what we learned yesterday and let's segue into today. Okay, so we got one day in the bag, maybe to go. So this today is going to be about a, a little more performance than it was yesterday. We're not going to race. That's kind of your thing. That's cool. But we're going to race amongst ourselves. So from run to run, that's our comparison. Not so much from partner to partner. Does that make sense? So we're going to give you a lot of feedback, and today is going to be about the little things, even more than it was yesterday. Yesterday was a little more broad. Today is going to be a little more focused, a little more acute. Okay. Take it from him. He stole a lot of bags in the major leagues. Okay. Listen to whether it's direct uh, causal cues or it's anecdotal. Okay. Listen to the way he talks about it. He's passionate about it. It's pretty amazing. Okay. So. Our half an hour warm up yesterday. Let's rinse and repeat. Let's go at it again. Okay. Ask your buddies. Hey, Cody, how come you can get so tall in your position? Maybe he doesn't know that, but he can provide a little bit of insight. So, well, this is what I focus on. So not always getting it from the coach, getting from your teammates. And that's a good opportunity for a leadership role for these guys. Okay, Tito, just like we did before, I'm going to start mock drills. A March, um, Scott, show us. Nice and tall, really, really long and linear torso. Thigh comes up to 90. Really, really exaggerated flexion in the shin. That palm right up to your cheek. Okay, we'll get into this specifically in a little bit. Okay, first wave. Derek, I want you to get nice and tall. Tito, we go back to what we've done. Keep your hip height, keep your chin neutral. Let's see you do it. through the elbow you're pulling through with your lat and one of the things I want to see a little more is a little more we call it ripping through the pocket okay back in the day we used to pull our pockets out of our shorts and we would hit the little flap to make sure our hand was coming through far and that starts with the elbow our shoulder hinges our elbow stays at 90 okay so I don't want to stop it here I want to bring it all the way back create range Okay, hey, Smith, one, two, go. Don't think about it as much. I used to do these drills with my eyes closed so I could feel the way through the drill I wasn't forcing it. Okay, so just flow a little more, boys. First, so there's not going to be one way. We're not going to be starting in this position every single time. What we want to try to do is after that swing, we want to get that lean and get into this position familiar with and we worked on the last couple of days right so if I take if I take a swing swing here swing is finished now what am I gonna do how am I gonna get from here to first base remember we have to get in this position we can't go anywhere from here so it's after the swing in this position and then we're driving seven strides come up through the bag second set of thumbs so Ben asked yesterday what does it mean to lift out of your drive phase? We used to call it our transition. So there's seven phases to under your sprint. There's reaction, there's clearance, there's drive phase, there's acceleration, bump. There's transition, acceleration, top speed, deceleration, okay? That transition is the hardest, the hardest thing to teach because it's different for everybody. But what I like to see is transition means hips are down, hands are high, feet are back, hips are back, 
and we're gonna be, our hips are gonna rise at every stride, about five degrees for, for every stride, okay? Once we get to about our seventh stride, our hips are gonna come up underneath us and we're gonna lift our chest and our eyes are now focused on our target. Okay, does that make sense? So it's like a plane taking off the runway. It's taking off progressively. Building speed, the pilot pulls back in the yoke, takes off. So it's not abrupt, it's smooth in transition. Does that make sense? I'm not proud to say this, I made this mistake too many times. Roll over a ground ball, does us no good to watch the fielder and watch the ball. We've made contact, we're base runners, we're going in, we're focusing on the foul post. It takes time to watch, it, it compromises our mechanics to watch the ball while we're trying to run. If we're trying to get down there as quick as possible, let's focus on that and not focus on where the ball is. Now what we're trying to do is time when our right, right foot hits, right? We're shuffling, we're shuffling, and then we're going to get from here into that position that we've been talking about, and then we're going. So this is the number one problem I see. Shuffle, shuffle, stop, and then they have to go. So we have to time our shuffle to where our right foot is getting down. The play is already happening. We process it, right foot hits down, and then we go. Shut it down, right? So we have to be playing these things in our mind so we're ready 